الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Indeed all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and the controller of the universe and all within and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger his family, his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time my dear brothers and sisters in Islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh forgetfulness is one of the natures of human beings and even the Prophet والسلام, had to face this issue of forgetfulness now in terms of conveying the Sharia and the message that he received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he has been protected, he has isma from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact, all the messengers and all the prophets of Allah in relation to conveyance of the message, explanation of the message, they have protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're ma'asum as we say. Protected from uh, mistakes in conveyance of the message. But in other aspects of life, after all, they were human beings. So they were also faced with the similar challenges that other human beings were faced with. And so forgetting in prayer, for example, you know, how many rak'ah did you pray? This is something that can happen to anybody at any time. Al-Imam al-Bukhari relates this hadith in his Sahih. When once the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam in salat al-dhuhr, he prayed only two rak'ah and he made salam. And some of the people, they were maybe confused or shocked. They left the masjid and they're talking among themselves, you know, that the prayer was the prayer shortened and things like that. But eventually a companion named Dhul Yadain or the title he was known by is Dhul Yadain, which by the way literally means two hands, but everybody has two hands. But why he was called Dhul Yadain, according to the, the description, his hands were, as we might say, longer than normal. Among what people considered the normal length of hands, his were much longer, so people called him Dhul Yadain. He came to the Prophet ﷺ. Because the Prophet ﷺ, you know, prayed the prayer, two rakah, he didn't realize that. He thought he had prayed four. And so after the salah, he turned around and he sat down doing his dhikr and so on. <clears throat> and then this companion came to him. And in the most respectful way, and this is another lesson, although this is not really what I want to share with you today from the hadith. But this is another important lesson the hadith teaches us. The very respectful manner in which he addressed the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. You know, he didn't come and say, you know, you're the messenger of Allah and you can't even count. You know, you pray two instead of four. That would have been very rude and very abrasive and abusive. But the Sahaba were always muta'addib. They were always well-mannered and respectful of the Prophet ﷺ. So he came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Anas aqusiratis salatu am nasid. Was the prayer shortened? Or did you forget? Interestingly, brothers and sisters, he did not even say, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you forgot, you prayed only two. Notice the way he put it over is, is, is an extreme level of respect. Because he knew that the Prophet ﷺ only prayed two. But was it because he forgot? Or was the prayer shortened? You see, if he had said, you forgot the messenger of Allah, then the assumption from his part would have been what? There are no other alternatives. You forgot, that's it, plain and simple. But you see, he understood. 
being the messenger of Allah, the one who's receiving the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in real time as we say, he realized that the possibility that there is another explanation is there. Maybe the prayer was shortened. In that case, it's not a fault of the Prophet wasalam. It would have been, as we might say, his own fault for not having knowledge of this. This is a level of respect and this is amazing. So he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, was the prayer shortened? You know, I didn't know that. Or did you forget? The Prophet ﷺ, in his own mind, felt that he did not forget that he had prayed for, for Dhuhr. So he said to this Sahabi, Lam yakun dhalika. Nothing of the sort happened. The prayer is not shortened, and I did not forget. And the companion again, because he knew something happened, and other Sahabas knew. Some of, or most of them were just too timid per, per, per se to come and raise the issue with the Prophet ﷺ. Still, when the Prophet told him nothing of the sort happened, I didn't forget the prayer was not shortened, which implies what? I prayed for. Despite this, the companion, in, in still a very respectful way, told the Prophet no. He said, Bal qad kana ba'du he said something of the sort happened. Notice he didn't say, no, 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 you forgot, you know. Or I'm sure you forgot, I'm counting, you know, I'm whatever, no. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, indeed something of the sort happened. Either you forgot, that is, or the prayer was shortened. When he said this, then the Prophet ﷺ realized that despite what he thought, that he had, you know, he was sure that he had prayed for, he realized that that wasn't the case. So he asked. And the companions around, they verified that he had only prayed two. So he stood up with them, because remember, some people had left the masjid. But those who remained, he stood up with them and he prayed two more. He didn't repeat the whole prayer. And here we have the role model in the Prophet ﷺ. If we ever find ourselves in such situations, the, the, the answer is very simple. He prayed the two more rak'ah, and then he did sijjat sahu before he made the salam. Now, the other issue that I wanted to share with you is that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on certainty, not guesswork. We're sure. And that is why in prayer, if ever we forget, anyone forgets, how many rak'ah did I pray? Is it three or four? Is it two or three? Is it even one or two? You can't remember. The principle is, remember, you worship Allah based on what you're certain about. And so when you're doubtful between how many rak'ah you have prayed, whether it's a smaller or the larger number, you always use the smaller number. Why? Because that's the one you're sure about. If you're not sure, did I pray three or four? You're sure you've prayed three. The question is, did you pray the fourth one? That's what you're uncertain about. So you don't assume that you'll pray four. Because you would be doing what? Worshipping Allah based on uncertainty. You, you, you finish your prayer based on the smaller number, only three. Because that is where certainty is. And you complete based on that. It may be that you're actually praying five rak'ah. That's possible. You could have prayed four, and you can't remember them. So you have no choice. You go with the smaller number, and then you complete your prayer based on that. Even if in reality, you have actually prayed five, that is okay, that is excused. Because it's not done deliberately. It is the deliberate and intentional addition or subtraction from the prayer that will render it null and void. Of course, if while praying the extra rakah, you realize, you know what, no, no, this is actually an extra one now. Or before you get up to pray that extra one, you're able to figure out that, no, you know what, I've, I'm certain that I've actually prayed four. Then you work with that certain knowledge. But that's what's important. We worship Allah based on certainty. So generally, when we pray and we, are, we forget whether it's been two or three or three or four, we use the smaller number. Because that's what we're certain about, and we complete the prayer based on that. 
The same rule applies, by the way, if you're doing tawaf. You have to make seven circles of the Kaaba. But what if you can't remember how many circles? Happens often. You know, usually I take groups for Hajj. And subhanAllah, often I will hear brothers and sisters will come to me and say, you know, I am not sure, but I think I only did six circles of the Kaaba. And I say to them, you know, whenever you are unsure of how many you've done, do as many as you need to do until you're satisfied you've done your seven circles because you're right there. You don't need to come back to the hotel to tell me this, you have to go back to the haram. You're right there. Do the extra one till you're sure that it is seven. Again, of course, deliberate addition or subtraction from what is prescribed will render the whole ibadah null and void. But again, if a person is unsure how many circles of the Kaaba I have done in Tawaf, is it three or four, four or five, five or six, six or seven? You use the smaller number because that's what you're certain about. You're certain about five, you've done five. You're just not sure about the sixth one. Or you've done six, you're just not sure about the seventh one. So you complete based on that. In another hadith, another incident, and again, I'm showing you that the basis on which we worship Allah is certainty. Not guesswork, not assumptions. A man once came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said to him, O Messenger of Allah, sometimes it appears to me that while I'm praying, I pass wind. Now this question is, is important, the wording is important. Because the man says, it appears to me, meaning I don't know for sure.